Minasan, Akarina san. Today we have an unappreciated pioneer of modern idol anime and seiyu units. Obviously not the first group to do this stuff, but a very influential one that I feel lots of people in the community have forgotten and the newer folks don't even know they exist. Wake Up Girls, also known as WUG or WUGU, was a seven member CU unit that belonged to the Dive 2 Entertainment record label, but also signed to the 81 Produce Agency and the entertainment conglomerate known as AVEX. As with all idol-like units, they have colors assigned to them, but unique to them, they also had image animals, which was kind of pointless, but a fun touch and more relevant to the anime. Before I introduce them, I just want to warn you that the characters share the same first names as their seiyu, and I will be saying both names each time since this is meant to be a full guide. I'll say the seiyu names first each time though, so you can hopefully easily follow. So the seven members were Kaya Okono, the selfie queen, playing Kai Kikumi, Green image color and crocodile image animal. Miyu Takagi, the glutton, playing Miyu Okamoto. Orange lady with the eagle. Minami Tanaka was a resident English speaker. Not actually, but she did try. Portraying Minami Katayama, yellow color with a tiger for her animal. Their idol princess, Nanami Yamashita, playing Nanami Hisami, being the purple wolf. Airi Aino was their best dancer in my opinion. She portrayed Airi Hayashida, indigo color, with a shark for her animal. Mayu Yoshioka as Mayu Shimada was the red lady with the lion, and for a while I actually thought she was their leader, but she's actually the center. With Yoshino Aoyama serving as their leader, playing Yoshino Nanase, having the polar bear in light blue for her image. Also overall just being their star member. Then the group as a whole had the image color of green, which I always find odd when the group's color is the same as a member. Like how do you know if they're a diehard Kaya fan or they're just supporting the group as a whole? They could have totally had Kaya be the pink lady with the flamingo image animal. But anyway, the name Wake Up Girls comes from a local love hotel. Well, in lore at least, I'm not sure of the IRL origins. They would also often use the abbreviated version of their name, WUG, or WUGU is how they would say because of their accents, and combine it with greetings for their live shows, like Konichi WUGU and Komba WUGU. Very cute. So let's begin in 2012, when in September till December, the AVEX 81 Produce Wake Up Girls Audition Second Annie Song Vocal Audition was held. Yeah, the title is very odd, but I think it means that it's a second Annie Song Vocal Audition overall, with this one being focused on forming Wake Up Girls, and being sponsored by AVEX and 81 Produce. After our seven ladies passed and went through a bunch of training I assume, the group was properly formed on April 1st in 2013. For those who don't know, that day is what Japan usually considers as the proper start of the year. That's when the school year begins, that's when the fiscal year begins for video game companies. Well, just companies in general, I assume. And yeah, I guess I'm just trying to say that in their eyes, the girls formed at the beginning of the year. Then in July, they had their first public appearance at the semi-annual Wonder Festival, having a few more smaller events throughout the year and even a handshake event at Comicat. I'm pretty sure their very first song, Atachi Agare, or Stand Up, was also first heard this year as well. It just didn't get a proper release, not for streaming at least. I guess they also had a mobile game come out this year too near the end, but I couldn't find too much info on it, and I'm sure it didn't stick around long. In 2014, they had their first proper single, Seven Girls War, along with Koto Noha Alba, both releasing on the same day and serving as the opening and ending for their anime, which began airing right at the beginning of the year, along with its prequel short movie. Later in the year was Wugzu, a short chibi spin-off with them dressed up as their animals. They also released a photo book, Seven Girls Holiday, as well as having their first live tour, titled I'm Sorry for Still Being an Amateur. They attended Wonderfest again as well, which I'm sure was very special for them. And uh, here I am after the video is completely finished to tell you that I forgot about the special Winterfest that they had at the end of this year. With I1 Club even singing Goku Joe Smile together, but more on all of that as the video progresses. In 2015, the girls had their second full tour, titled I'm Sorry for Going Back and Forth. Then as for music, they don't have traditional albums, well, like they kind of do. They are marketed as that at least, but in reality they are just compilation albums. This first one coming out in 2015, titled Wake Up Best. They also had two more singles, Girls of Symphony, an absolute banger, and served as the main theme for the first short movie that they had this year. A few months later they had the second single of the year, Beyond the Bottom, the main theme for the second short movie of the year with the same title. And just for a little bonus thing that is technically not Wake Up Girls but involves most of them, there was an anime called Hakadol that had Nanami, Miyu, and Kaya as leads as well as singing the opening and ending theme songs. Mayu, Minami, and Yopi having supporting roles with Airi being the only one left out. But to be fair she was always more performer rather than Seiyu. 
Even to this day, she's basically the only one that's not really active anymore. But more on that later, the last thing for 2015 was their second and final photo book, Seven Girls History. In 2016, they had the album Wake Up Best 2. Then Bokura No Frontier, the ending for Scorching Ping Pong Girls. Their first time doing a song that's not related to their own series. Minami even having a lead role in the show while Yopi and Kaya voice supporting characters. With lives, naturally they kept the tour streak going and had their third, titled I'm Sorry for Going Here and There. This one having a live band. Though I'm not sure if it was for the whole tour or just the show that the Blu-ray was on, but either way, their songs translate very well to live band versions. This year, they had their first non-tour show as well, the Wake Up Girls Festa 2016 Super Live. A, a very good show featuring i1 Club, their in-universe rivals, as well as their branch unit, Next Storm. More on those groups later, but for this year, Wugzu also had another bonus episode. And now for 2017, this is a big year for them. Three new singles. The first was Koi de Ai de Bokundes, the first song that I ever heard from them. The opening for Love Tyrant, where Yopi voiced a lead character. I remember loving this opening when I first heard it, but at the time I didn't care to research or even to pay attention to the group that was singing it. Just enjoying the song for what it was, then years later I discovered Wagu and rediscovered that banger of a song. I actually have quite a few stories like that with other groups and singers, but anyway, the other two songs that they released were Seven Senses and Shizuku no Kanmari, the opening and ending themes for the second and final season of their anime. However, also this year, they released a song in collaboration with pop singer Main, titled One in a Billion, opening theme for Restaurant to Another World, where once again Yopi and Kaya had supporting roles. As for live shows, well, actually, let's start off with a full-on stage play that they had, featuring all of the girls, but also having I-1 Club in the play. Though the I-1 girls unfortunately not being played by their seiyuu, but instead played by actual stage performers. Except for Yuka Otsubo, who did reprise her role. Mia Kusakabe was also in this play, and I think that's pretty cool. She is a great actress. And the plot of the play was just the first season of the anime, so it was pretty easy to follow, even without subtitles. Then of course, fourth tour, I'm sorry for keep saying sorry. The grammar is a little bit off, but you get the point. They even had a special performance of this in Shanghai, China. Aside from these, they had a little charity mini-concert in Iwate. How nice of them. But also Wake Up Girls Festa 2017 at Trinity. Again, having the I-1 Club and Next Storm. The final two things for this year were winning the special award at the 11th Seiyu Awards and being featured in a song called Subasobo Matsumono to celebrate 100 years of anime. There were a lot of artists on the song, like around 23, but to be chosen out of all the musical artists at the time, it must have been a big honor. 2018, new album Wug Best 3, but also their ninth and final single release, Suki no Skill. Ending for a death march to a parallel world, Kaya having a lead role, with Minami and Airi having supporting characters. There was another charity concert, this time in Fukushima. They had their 5th anniversary live, as well as the Green Leaves Fest. Green Leaves being the agency that the girls belong to in the anime, and in lore they have a junior group known as Run Girls Run in the same agency, so I would heavily assume they made an appearance here as well, I just can't confirm it. Also, the real life Run Girls Run actually sang the opening for Death March to a Parallel World, where Wagu sang the ending. Now, on a sad note, all good things must come to an end. This year, it was announced that they would disband their activities in the following year, just giving everyone a heads up so they could mentally prepare themselves, I guess. But then, of course, they had another tour, the final tour, part one started up, and part two, Fantasia, or Fantasia, as they would pronounce it. But shoutouts to the opening act of the second one literally being an old school JRPG. 2019 was the third and final part of their final tour, Kado Day. They also had Wake Up Best Memorial, their final proper release as well as the final concert, Parade of Memories. Another amazing performance, opening and ending with Tachi Agare, the very first song they ever had. Very fitting and a very emotional send-off for the girls, even having a triple encore. I don't know if I've ever seen that before. The crowd just wouldn't let them go. The concert being in March, by the way, which, as I said earlier, marks the end of the year, having them being active for basically exactly six years. Kind of odd though, since their gimmick focused a lot on the number 7, but maybe the creative team just burnt out, so going another year was just out of the question. So of course, their story does end here, but there is something else to mention in 2020. There were technically new albums, but they were just more compilations. A live album consisting of the songs from their final concert. Then Wake Up Girls a Solo Collection, which had two solo songs from each of the girls, except for Mayu, who had three. Now, as always, I want to mention the special festivals that they were at. Anime Central over in America, 
Anime Japan twice, AFA Singapore and Billy Billy World, then having four Valentine's Day joint lives with Iris, their unofficial sister unit, with them both being on the same label and agency. But that final one in 2019 also featured Run Girls Run. I really gotta get my hands on that live. With the two big yearly festivals at Animax, they were at both shows in 2017. Shoutouts to them doing the Sakura Awards opening. But they were also there in 2018. Only for one show though. With Anisama, they were there basically every year that they were active. 2014 to 2018. Though they missed out on the 2016 show. And they disbanded just a few months before the 2019 show, so they didn't make that one either. But some of them were in the yearly music video for the 2014 theme song. Both of these festivals giving the girls a big send off for their final appearances in 2018. At Animax, having three different collab cover songs with Lusei Twinkle Wink, Megumi Nakajima, and then Starlight Kukagumi. Over at Anisama, during the final minutes of their final song, other groups RGR, Aqua, Iris, and Milky Homes appeared on the screen behind them to congratulate them on their career. A very emotional moment that hits me hard every time. Like, literally every single time. I don't think I've ever seen Takagi cry except for here, like even during their actual final show. Most of the other girls were an emotional wreck there, but she was keeping it together. Not here at Anisama though. And just look at the sash across her chest and what it says. Well, anyway, that is a career total of 7 tours. If you include each part of the final as their own shows, which they are, 6 albums, all of which were technically compilations, 9 solo singles, one with main, and like 50-ish songs total from the group, including solo tracks. And let's not forget about their stage play, 2 photo books, and 2 seasons of anime, a chibi spinoff, and 3 short movies. They also had 11 music videos, though most of them aren't available on YouTube. Not the full versions, at least. Not bad for a 6 year career, especially back before this stuff really picked up. Nowadays we have a lot of multimedia franchises and many seiyuu units. Now let's move on to the anime and supporting cast. No major story spoilers will be said here, I just want to give you an idea of what to expect. That is, if you do decide to check out the animation, which I highly recommend that you do. So the anime does a great job of showing how toxic, competitive, and just scummy the idol industry can be. It doesn't dive into super serious things like stalking or drugs, but lesser, still serious things like using the idols for their bodies to sell to the fans. Especially when it's an underground group. During the first performance, their skirts flopping up and the underwear being shown is honestly very realistic, even if it is a little weird, but that stuff does happen in real life. And I mean, that's just Japan for you. Don't let it stop you from watching the rest of the show. The anime also somewhat explains how they got their image animals and colors. Like Minami's old lady friends thinking of her as a ray of sunshine, so they say she should use the color yellow. Then the girls getting their animals because of a news reporting series that they host. And I think this series does a great job giving each character development. Something the auto shows back then didn't really do. Every girl got an equal amount of time. Maybe Mayu and Yoshino had a tiny bit more, but that's because they are the leader and the center. But there was also a good believable amount of drama within the group and outside of it. The main difference for the bug anime compared to the other idol series is that the story actually progresses. New groups are formed from existing members, there's an actual history between managers and idols, and like, yeah, if I say any more it kinda gives stuff away. You can argue stuff like Love Live does have a story too, but not as in-depth as this one, in my opinion. The only anime I compare this to would be Zombieland Saga, but that focuses way more on comedy. Though the main premise is very similar aside from the whole zombie thing, Funny enough, Minami is in both Wagyu and Zombieland Saga. The progression of their skill was perfectly paced for me. I saw a review saying how the girls kept messing up and made the reviewer angry. Clearly that person has never practiced anything before, but by the final three episodes they were performing fine. Realistically, even then they should still be messing up a bit, but it is fiction. Which is actually hard to remember sometimes because of how real it can feel. The second sequel movie in particular really hit hard and changed a lot of the story for me. And there's just a few more things I want to say before I move on. I guess this turned into my own mini anime review. But after season 1, the show started to have a bit of new animation. And Yoshino changes something in her character design, keeps things a little fun and fresh. I actually think it happened because the Seiyu herself changed her appearance so they decided to have the character do it too. And that's really cool. Then the final season started to use 3D animation for the dancing scenes. I feel like some people may not like that, but it was fine for me. What isn't fine, however, is for some odd reason they gave Yoshino the wrong name in the opening credits. Maybe it was just the version I watched, but I also checked four different websites and this error was on each of them. Which does lead me to believe that it is in the proper release as well. Realistically not a big deal, but I thought it would be something fun to point out. The last thing, and arguably the coolest thing, after the end credits, the preview for the next episode, is actually the Seiyuu in live action doing a live recording. They did it a lot in season 2 as well, but with a different group doing it. 
And speaking of that, that perfectly transitions to the next thing, talking about the supporting cast. I'm not going to go over all the character names since they honestly aren't that important or memorable. The memorable aspect comes from the live action performances that the Seiyu do, and majority of these Seiyu are fairly well known. Starting with I-1 Club, they're somewhat rivals. In lore, I-1 Club are the top group, having like 200 members, basically just being a parody of AKB48, having an extremely toxic environment and a hard-ass director. And I'm pretty sure their label is Bvex, as opposed to our real-world Avex. Another fun little easter egg. And in lore, one of the Wuggle girls even used to perform with the group as well. And that's just another little example of world building and story progression that I was talking about. So like I said, in lore there's 200 members, but in real life the usual lineup consists of Emily Kato, Minami Suda, Kaori Fukuhara, Nozomi Yamamoto, Satomi Akesaka, Kiyono Yasuno, Yuka Otsubo, and Reina Ueda. Most, if not all, also belong to the 81 Produce Agency, or at least they were at some point. These girls have about 9 songs, some were sang in the show, and also performed live at the festas in 2016 and 17. Two of their tracks, Goku Joe Smile and Jetta, are even covered by Wagu during their solo shows. Actually, during the second Wagu show, they even dressed up in the I1 uniforms for Jetta. It was good, they look great. The next group is Next Storm, basically serving as a subunit to the I1 club for reasons that are explained in the anime. Having Yuka Otsubo as their leader, but also housing Chika Anzai, Mao Omatsuka, and Marika Kono. They were a very minor group formed pretty late in the story, and they only had two songs, but they did perform them live. I really like the style they have, and their name is actually pretty cool. The final group for this franchise was the junior group to Wake Up Girls, joining the agency later in the story, that being Run Girls Run, in lore named by Miyu and meant to be a follow-up to the Wug name. The explanation being after you wake up, you go for a run. Well, normal healthy people do. We sure as hell don't. But yeah, that's the meaning behind their very unique name. They also share names between Seiyu and character, but while their seniors share the first names, these ladies have the same last names as their characters. Koko Hayashi playing Ayumi Hayashi, with the red color. Nanami Atsuki playing Itsuka Atsuki, as the light blue girl. And Yuka Morishima playing Otome Morishima, having the orange color. Also being their leader, and I have a big crush on this lady, let me tell ya. I talked about them already in one of my Seiyu units videos, but these girls can actually be considered a secondary leads. They were also casted through an audition, the AVAX 81 Produce Wake Up Girls Audition 3rd Annie Song Vocal Audition. Their group made their real life debut in 2017 at the Wonder Festival, singing two covers of Wake Up Girls songs. Throughout their career, they had one full album, one mini, and eight singles, the last one coming out in 2021. Some of these tracks were Annie songs, or Death March to a Parallel World, Girly Air Force, Assassin's Pride, and Kirito Prichan. Lots of Kirito Prichan, by the way, these girls serving as the leads for that show. Some Wogu ladies appeared in this series too as supporting characters, and everyone performed live. After Wake Up Girls disbanded in 2019, Run Girls Run kept going up until 2023 where they held their final show, closing their story and the entire saga of the Wake Up Girls franchise. If you're interested in RGR, I highly recommend the songs Share the Light and Break the Blue. You can even still watch their music videos here on YouTube. This leads me to the next section. I'll give you some song recommendations and talk about some fun things that they've done at live shows. So first up, here are some group songs from them that I suggest you listen to. As I said earlier, Jetta and Goku Joe Smile technically being I1 Club songs, but the Wogu versions are better. With one in a billion, you need to check out the music video. Everyone looks fantastic, especially Mayu. And Tachiagare is like the main song I recommend. It might honestly be my favorite song of all time. Can't go wrong with Seven Girls War though, it was the first opening theme, and with Polaris, it was one of their final releases. Being the very last song that they ever performed at a special event, the final Annie Sama that they were at. And the cool thing with that track is that all the girls wrote the lyrics for it, so it's very special. Now here are some solo songs I think you should listen to. Nanami's in particular, it is a bop, like the very definition of a bop. But I think the others are also very good and each of them bring a somewhat different feeling to them. Also, something else to mention aside from solo songs, they did have tracks where they were split into duos, trios, and even a quartet. Though they weren't very common, honestly I only really remember them doing it during the final live tour. And the last song thing, all of the girls have solo versions of Wugzu, Higawari Princess, and Nonstop Diamond. The girls also did some fun stuff during live shows. During Seven Girls War, they always showed off a bit of their skills halfway through the song. Like some leg extensions, Hyrie's breakdancing, and Kaya's weird finger flexibility. Minami did some baton trolling in multiple different occasions, making it look very easy. 
And sticking with her and her talent, they even covered some songs, as most groups do. Some Annie songs, like Miyu doing the Nya Ruko opening. But to be fair with that one, her character did it in the anime, so it was probably just her doing it because of that. She also pulled out the guitar once and covered Don't Say Lazy from k -On. They would do other popular music in general though, like Minami one time doing a Taylor Swift song entirely in English. And showed us Tananami doing some magic tricks one time for one of her solo sections. It was so random, but really fun. Now we are getting very close to the end here, we are on to some fun facts, only about the main group though. I have actually made videos about four of them already, with a Mayu video coming early next year, so if you want to check those out, you can learn much more about the girls individually. But for now, Miu was the youngest and the tallest, while Kaya was the oldest and the shortest. Funny how that works. Kaya was also apparently the sub-leader, with Mayu being the middle child in terms of both age and height. And remember, she was their center. Again, a very fun, odd coincidence. Then Minami, Yopi, and Miyu are all the same age, with Minami, Airi, and Kaya all being born in January. They're all in the same agency as I said earlier, 81 Produce, and even to this day, all seven are actually still in it. And then Miyu and Airi were both born in Sendai within the Miyagi Prefecture, which is where the story in the anime actually takes place. Though Miyu did move to Chiba fairly early on in her life. As for some other kind of random things that I noticed while watching them, Yoshino has a really nice opera voice that she's shown off a few times at shows, especially in the stage play. Also, during the early stages, Mayu and Yopi were in a bit of an argument, which led to Minami trying to break it up with some tears in her eyes, saying that she really likes everyone there at the training camp and really just wants everyone to get along, which I'm pretty sure was used for a scene in the anime as well. Keeping with her, as I have said a few times now, Minami was always trying to speak English with the most basic of words. The classic foreigner trying to speak English trope, something that she would continue to do even after the group disbanded. Then I found it funny how Minami the character is a glutton, but in real life it was the Seiyu Miyu. Also shout outs to Minami, Kaya, and Mayu playing Resident Evil 7 in VR. Mayu is absolutely terrified of all things horror, so it was very fun to watch. Now for the final section. Outside of the franchise, what are they up to these days? Even though the girls disbanded 5 years ago, basically all of them are still very active in the idol scene. Ayuri, Miyu, Kaya, and Nanami are all in Cinderella 9 together, while Yopi, Miyu, and Kaya are in the Tokyo 6 franchise together, which are admittedly lesser known series, but as for the more popular stuff, Minami is part of Franchushu with the Zombieland Saga franchise, also doing some live performances with 8 Beat Story a few years back, Miyu is the DJ for Peaky Peaky from D4DJ, Nanami is an Idol Master Cinderella Girls, Mayu is part of Project Sakai, but also recently joining Uma Musume Pretty Derby, where Akaya and Yopi also perform in. Not to mention Yopi also being everyone's favorite introvert, Bochi. Majority of the girls are also in the Japanese dubbing of Thomas and Friends All Engines Go, doing some music for the Japanese version as well. And for something else back in the day, Iris and Wagu used to be co-hosts on the Live Damn Company YouTube channel, where they would rotate doing variety programs, fun games, and promoting upcoming anime that they were featured in. Nowadays, Yopi has her weekly radio program with Kawaii Maida, titled Kinyobi no Shijimi, which has been going on since 2021, and then Mayu and Nanami have a show together called Kotopan, short for Kotodama Pancake, and they even did a photo book together in Okinawa. They've been doing this one since like 2019, I believe. And the very last thing, Mayu and Nanami again, along with Takiki, have programs on the Famitsu Game Live YouTube channel. Again, shoutouts to Mayu playing Resident Evil, this time Village, and hating every second of it. Oh, and Miyu has her own YouTube channel where you can find her streaming very, very often. And with that, we have officially reached the ending. Sorry if these last sections seemed like a jumbled mess. I had a bunch of silly things I wanted to mention, but didn't exactly know where to put it all. Hopefully it was easy to follow, and I also want to shout out the channels Punster and Worlds of Pancakey for their Wagu content. Lots of good translated stuff over there that will be linked down below along with a bunch of other things. I really do hope you've enjoyed and I convince you to check out the franchise or even just the main group if you haven't already. If you did enjoy, please leave a like and maybe even share the video around on like Reddit or Discord or whatever. And for sure join me in the next video about what the members of the goth band Roselia do outside of Bang Dream. I look forward to seeing you there.